So, come to this diagram again. So, this is actually the steady state error minus 0 0.0235 hertz, right. So, if you do the simulation, it will be coming like this is for non D turbine. Non D turbine, I told you that uh, in the case of non D turbine, right, then your uh, then this uh, your what you call from uh, this uh, block diagram, right, you drop this uh, term, only one time constant will be there. You drop this term, just hold on, just hold on, right. From for non D turbine, this term should be dropped. I mean, this term should be not in that case, k r is equal to 1. So, it will be it this that means this term will not exist. So, only this term will exist. In that case, it will be your what you call a state that a matrix will be 3 into 3. This term should not be there. So, directly you join it, this term should not be there for non D heat. That, I, that we have told you also earlier for non D turbine. So, in that case, the responses are like this for re type the peak frequency deviation will be slightly higher right compared to your non heat type but steady state error will remain same right because r and kp values are same for both the cases it will remain generation for your reheat type will take little bit uh, little bit more time to settle it is uncontrolled mode so cannot be exactly 0 0.01 i told you it will be point your what you call a little bit less 0 0.0019 less right so that's why your uh, this is and it will take slightly more time because you have read time constant 10 second is there it will be slower. So, dynamic performance is slightly slow, slower than your non read type the black one is the uh, uh, non read type, uh, but ultimately it will not exactly 0 0.01 through MATLAB simulating also you can check that it is not 0 0.01 slightly less whatever you have shown. So, this is uncontrolled mode dynamic responses for uncontrolled mode u is equal to 0 that is uncontrolled mode of operation. This is time, this side is time, this is time, right. And this is your, this side is frequency hertz and this is generator power in power you need megawatt, right. So, that is your uh, some ideas about the dynamic performances. I am not asking you to write code or anything, just for general thing. For this code, no, no question of writing code, right. For your own interest, you can verify in MATLAB because I strongly believe that everyone knows MATLAB, sim, MATLAB simulating thing nowadays, right. Code also, code also very easily can be written uh, for such kind of system, but that is beyond the scope and one can verify the result using writing code and MATLAB simulating. You will find all the results are identical, right. So, next we take say one small example, right. Just, uh, just you have to try to understand that this example. So, a system consists of four identical 400 MVA generating units, right feeding a total load of 1016 megawatt, 1016 megawatt, right. The inertia constant h of each unit is 5 second, 5.0 second and your this total load is this one 1000 megawatt, this is 400 MVA, 4 identical generator and your the inertia constant is 5 second on 400 MVA base for each unit. The load changes by 1.5 percent for a 1 percent change in frequency, when there is a sudden drop in load by 16 megawatt. So, initially a total load of 1016 megawatt, but there is a sudden drop of 16 megawatt. Then what you have to do is, you have to obtain the system block diagram with constant H and D expressed on 1600 MVA base, right. You have to obtain the system block diagram with constant H and D. Second thing is, determine the frequency deviation assuming that there is no speed governing system. If there is no speed governing system means that delta p g is equal to 0 you have to take. This should be in your mind that whenever they say no speed governing action means delta p g will be 0, right. So, if you if you look at this now solution that how we will make it. So, for 4 units on 1600 MVA base h equivalent actually is will become 5 into 5 is the inertia constant the h it is given, this h is given here 5 second, 5 into there are 4 units, 4 identical 400 MP units. So, 4 in 400 into 4 and on 1600 MVA base, right. So, what we are doing is that we are type because, because it is asked that you find out on 1600 MVA base. So, divided by the base MVA 1600. So, that is actually h equal h equal becoming actually 5 second. So, same as whatever it is the equivalent one is 5. Now, you we are frequency, frequency is not mentioned right. Then you ask say, say in this case we have assumed f 0 is equal to 50 hertz. 
So, now if f 0 is equal to 50 r d is equal to delta p l upon delta f. Now, it is given that it is 1.5 that load changes by 1.5 percent for a 1 percent change in frequency. So, now there and, and your what you call there is a sudden drop in load by 16 megawatt. 16 megawatt means initially it was 1016, now it is 16 megawatt. So, load is now 1016 minus 16, so it is 1000 megawatt. That is why and it is 1.5 percent, the load changes 1.5 percent, that means it will be 1.5 into 1016 minus your 16 divided by 1 percent change in frequency is 1 into 50, percent percent will be cancelled. If you put, if you put it is 1, 1 percent here, uh, if 1.5 percent here, even 1 percent of that, percent means 1 upon 100, here also 1 upon 100, here also 1 upon 100, 100, 100 uh, will be cancelled actually. So, that is why you directly you are writing that 1.5 into 1016 minus 16 upon 1 into 50. So, if you simplify this and multiply all these things, they write it is coming actually 30 megawatt per hertz, it is in real unit because this is 30 megawatt and this is hertz. Now, d is equal to then your 30 megawatts per hertz and base is mentioned here 1600 MBA, this is the base that means this numerator is 30 megawatt, you have to make it in per unit megawatt. So, divide this one by 1600, so it will be 30 by 1600 per unit megawatt per hertz that is your 3 by 160 per unit megawatt per hertz. So, d is equal to 3 by 160 per unit megawatt per hertz. I hope you have understood this because this is a real unit, this is actually megawatt, this is actually megawatt, but base is 1600. So, we are dividing it by 1600, that means this megawatt will be converted to per unit megawatt. So, this is the value d is equal to 3 upon 160 per unit megawatt by hertz, but frequency anyway we are not changing to its per unit value, frequency is its original value, original unit that is hertz. Right. Therefore, we know this we know that T p actually we know 2 h upon d f 0 we know, but in this case we found actually h e q is equal to 5 second that is why instead of h we are writing T p is equal to 2 h e q upon d into f 0. So, 2 h e q we got 5 second right, h e q is 5 second, but we know T p is equal to 2 h upon f d 0, but instead of h we put h e q same thing same thing right, you put 5 h equal to 5 here and divided by d, d we just got 3 by 160 and f 0 is equal to 50 hertz. So, that is becoming 32 by 3 second right. So, this is your um, uh, your time constant T p and, and it is asked uh, in the problem it is asked that your what you call uh, your uh, obtain the system block diagram with constant h and d. System block diagram is a no speed governing system actually block diagram I have made it here right, at least made it here. So, it is no speed governing system, so that is why delta p is equal to 0. This is delta p l, the load disturbance, this is minus, this is plus, but it is 0. No, no speed governing action means that it is 0, right, delta p is 0 and this part you know k p upon 1 plus h t p, this is delta f. Only this part it is asked, not as a whole, all because the speed governing is not there, so no need to draw the this side block diagram, you have to understood this, only this much, only this much. So, k p is equal to 1 upon d, so d is equal to whatever we have got right. So, it is uh, 3 by 160, so it is 160 by 3 hertz per megawatt right and T p is equal to 30 uh, your what you call 2 by 3 second and this is your this is your d. So, d is equal to 1 upon k p, k p will be 160 upon 3. So, that is your 160 upon 3 hertz per unit megawatt because unit also will be say, changed and T p is equal to 32 by 3 second right. Now, the load change is decreased, that is load change is negative, because it was in the problem it was 1016 megawatt, now it has decreased to 16 megawatt, so it load change is negative. That means, delta P L is minus 16 megawatt divided by the 1600 MBA base, so that is minus 0 0.01 per unit megawatt, so load has decreased and there is a step change in the load, so for a step decrease in load. 0 0.0 point per unit 0 0.01 per unit megawatt and is a step function. So, Laplace transform of the change in load delta P L s and here I am putting s right just for your understanding will be minus 0 0.01 upon s because for a step input you know if the load disturbance say delta P d and if it is a step input then it will be delta P d upon s and load decrease. So, minus sign so minus delta P g here delta P d is equal to your, del your delta P L is equal to minus 0 0.01 upon s. So, from the block diagram, I mean from this block diagram, from this block diagram right, 
So, delta f is equal to minus delta p l k p into 1 upon s plus t p right. So, that means, I am making it one uh, this thing for you that delta f delta f from this diagram is equal to minus delta p l because delta p is 0. So, it is minus delta p l into k p upon 1 plus s t p right and that means, you know in bracket if you want you can put s right Laplace transform if I put what is here also I have made it s right because here in the problem itself here also I have made it s just for the purpose of your your understanding this one is s. So, this one if you put it here then delta f s is equal to minus of minus 0 0.01 upon s into your k p upon 1 plus s t p right then k p t p value one can put. So, it will be 0 0.01 then k p upon s 1 plus s t p right. So, this is the thing that means this is also same thing I have writing delta f s is equal to that is why plus 0 0.01 upon s into k p upon 1 plus s t p. So, it is 0 0.01 k p upon 1 by 1 plus 1 upon 1 uh, s into 1 plus s t p right. Now, this one you make it in that your uh, this one you make it in that your what you call in two terms right. That means, you know all these things uh, this thing you all this know from your calculus and other thing that let 1 upon s into 1 plus s t p is equal to a upon s plus b upon 1 plus s t p. So, you have to obtain a and b this is an identity this is an identity. Therefore, we can write so we can write that this side this side I am writing left hand side first that a into 1 plus s t p plus b into s upon s into 1 plus s t p is equal to this term right hand side 1 upon s, s into 1 plus s t p. That means, a plus s into a t p plus b is equal to 1 this is an identity. So, we will compare the coefficient. So, this side if you compare that constant coefficient. So, a is equal to 1 right and there is no s coefficient here that means, s that, that means, uh, it is 0. So, that means, it is your a t p plus b is equal to 0. Uh, that means, if it is a t p a t p plus b is equal to 0 that means, a t p plus b is equal to 0 right because just we are comparing the this is an identity. So, t p plus b your what you call is equal to your 0 because a is equal to 1 you put a is equal to 1 here. So, t p plus b is b is equal to minus t p that means, this expression that is 1 upon s into 1 plus s t p is equal to a is 1 1 upon s and b is equal to minus t p. So, minus t p upon 1 plus s t p. So, this way first you make this this you know this you know from your uh, uh, your what you call that uh, uh, second order system right uh, in control system this you are very much aware of it. So, we, so this is like this that means, my delta f s s will become 0 0.01 k p into this thing 1 upon s minus t p upon 1 plus s t p whatever you have got it here right. So, delta f s will be 0 0.01 k p 1 minus s divide t p numerator this one numerator and denominator because we have to take the inverse Laplace transform. So, minus 1 upon 1 upon s plus 1 upon t p divide this one numerator and denominator by t p right. Then you take the inverse Laplace transform if you take you know inverse Laplace transform delta f t is equal to 0 0.01 k p then 1 minus e to the power minus t upon t p capital T p right. Therefore, delta f t is equal to multiply this one 0 0.01 k p minus 0 0.01 k p e to the power minus t upon t p right, but k p is equal to 1 upon d we know this value we know this value that is 160 by 3. So, delta f t is equal to 0 0.01 160 upon 3 minus 0 0.01 160 upon 3 to the power minus t upon t p is equal to 32 by 3 that we have already calculated t p is equal to 32 by 3 right. That means, from this equation what you can guess from this equation you guess that for the steady state values steady state value k p is responsible k p and in this case no speed governing mechanism. So, r was not coming because delta p g was 0, but k p was there, but for transient when transient response is taken this t p has this effect, but a steady state t p has no effect right, uh, but only a steady state k p has it effect right, but as uh, transient your what you call that when t tends to infinity means this term will vanish actually it will become 0 right. So, in that case only k p has its effects on that steady state value, but all time constant they do not have any effect on the steady state only during transient this has the effect right. Therefore, this is we are substituting k p 160 by, uh, by 3 and your t p 32 by 3. 
that means that means delta f t is equal to 1.6 upon 3 after simplification 1 minus e to the power minus 3 t upon 32 actually this is your response of the fre uh, frequency like this. Now, at, at steady state you are what you call t tends to infinity right from this time response. So, t tends to infinity means this term is 0 because it is your minus 3 t upon 3 32. So, this term is vanished. So, delta f s is equal to actually 1.6 upon 3 that is 0 0.533 hertz right. So, this is that because it is positive because load de load has uh, decreased 16 megawatt decrease because of negative load de uh, decrease the frequency deviation will be steady state error will be positive. So, 0 0.533 hertz that means operating system frequency will be f is equal to f 0 plus delta f s s. So, it will be 50.533 hertz right this is and if you plot this graph this is an exponential exponential graph if you plot this it will move like this from this one it will go to your what you call to the steady state value that 0 0.533 hertz right. So, you start from t is equal to 0 if you put t is equal to 0 the delta f at t is equal to 0 is 0. So, it is starting from here and exponentially increasing finally, reaching to a steady state and this is the steady state value that is the, uh, this much this is 0 0.533 hertz this is the frequency response of this example. So, I hope uh, you have uh, when we will go through this video I hope you will be understanding this right. So, things are simple. Now, with controller just uh, see with controller here if you controller is there we cannot put that t tends to infinity or s equal to 0 we cannot do that here we have taken only integral controller a proportional integral can be considered then proportional integral integral derivative can be considered all set of controllers can be tried, but for the classroom exercise we have just taken that minus k i upon s k i is the integral gain setting and this we have taken right. So, only integral control controller we have taken. So, in this case your what you call that uh, if you take for this system if you take for example, that is minus k i upon s we have taken that if k i is in this case k i will be positive the if you take minus k i upon s if you take only k i upon s then k i should be negative, but I have taken minus k i upon otherwise what will happen system will become unstable right. So, that is that is why minus k i upon s means k i will take positive value. Now, for this system a controller is there. So, we here we cannot get any steady state block diagram because of this s if we can put s is equal to 0, but here we cannot do that. So, we will go for final value theorem with controller right. So, it is isolated power system with integral controller and this is your what you call we will see the steady state value that when you put integral controller you will find the steady state value delta f s s will become 0, whereas delta p and with this controller at that time delta p g s s will be exactly delta p l it will because frequency at that time there is no frequency error delta f s is 0. So, that means d into delta f s s term was there, but uh, in that case that the difference was coming because of the steady state error in frequency, but in this case when delta f s s will become 0. So, d into whatever de delta f s is 0. So, that term will not, not be there and because of this controller action delta p g will become delta p l. Now, look how to do it final value theorem. So, in this case in this case first you write down that equation delta f is equal to delta f is equal to k p upon 1 plus s t p right this is known. Then your this is actually this is known then what you will do that uh, delta p g is equal to I, I have written your few st one or two step ahead, but I am telling you how to make it right. I write little bit uh, slowly here right such that uh, things will be uh, this thing look at this diagram look at this uh, let this diagram right uh, this that means this is delta f this is delta f that means here also it is your delta f right here also I have written delta f that means your delta p g is equal to delta p g is equal to your minus k i upon s into delta f minus 1 upon r into delta f. So, delta f delta f is common. So, that means delta p g right is equal to the this delta p g multiplied by all these things will come right. So, it will be your minus delta f right minus delta f that means uh, your uh, if you take minus delta f upon r minus k i upon s. So, delta f will be common and then your in bracket it will be 1 upon k i plus your 1 upon r right. Let me put it little bit this thing right minus 1 upon k i plus 1 upon r right into 
this all this term into all this term that means into 1 upon 1 plus s t g into 1 upon 1 plus s t t right into your 1 upon your 1 plus s k r t r right divided by 1 plus s t r. So, all this term will be coming delta p g is equal to that is why whatever we are writing here. So, this delta f actually delta p g minus delta p l into k p upon 1 plus s t p. So, delta p g right delta p g is equal to your uh, yeah, sorry delta f is equal to your delta f is equal to your k p upon 1 plus s t p from this diagram k p upon 1 plus s t p into delta p g minus delta p l. This delta p g whatever you, it is written here this delta p g you substitute here you substitute here right. So, if you do so that is why you are writing that k p upon 1 plus s t p this whole term this whole term actually this this term it is delta p g just now just now we have written that this term is uh, delta p g right this term is delta p g. So, all these terms are written here minus delta p l del this term is delta p g minus here it is delta p l right if you simplify this that means this one if you want to write right I mean after simplification. So, this is your delta p g equal to so, what you can what you can do is that uh, this uh, your um, this uh, this term all these things 1 plus k p into if you multiply if you multiply uh, this thing it will be k p uh, into k i upon s plus 1 upon r then uh, this side it has come because when you multiply all this term this delta f term is there with this delta f term is there. So, this term multiplied this term into the, the or this thing will come to the left hand side right then minus k p into delta p l 1 plus s t p. I mean if you make it like this that this is your delta f is equal to this one and this term with this term from I mean uh, from here to here with this term delta f is associated with that multiplied by your what you call k p upon 1 plus s t p. So, you what you do you multiply this right you multiply this then you bring this term to the your what you call to the left hand side just writing one or two lines for you uh, such that uh, because here it will consume some time for writing this one, but it is understandable look at this term this term. So, in this case what you can do is that delta f delta f you multiply all these things it will become your k p upon 1 plus s t p a minus sign because of this one into k i upon s plus 1 upon r right into your 1 plus s k r t r divided by right all the terms 1 plus s t g 1 plus s t t 1 plus your what you call s t r right into this delta f term is there into delta f right M then minus your delta p l into k p divided by 1 plus s t p. This term you bring it to the left hand side this is delta f this is delta bring it to the left hand side and take delta f common if you do so and little bit you simplify if you do so you will get this 1 plus k p into all this term into delta f is equal to minus k p into delta p l upon 1 plus s t p that is whatever I have just written minus delta p l into k p upon 1 plus s t p right. So, if you bring to this side and then uh, your after this little bit you simplify it will be r k i plus s upon s r. So, s r is here right and r k i plus s r is here and this is 1 plus into everything is there delta f is equal to minus k p into delta p l upon 1 plus s t p right. Next is so next one is let there is a step load change in delta p d if there is a step load change the final value theorem we want to apply. So, delta p l will be delta p d upon s this delta step load change I have said no question of increase or decrease according to the increase it will plus according to the decrease it will be minus. So, in general delta p l will be delta p d upon s for a step load disturbance right. That means, 
for a step load disturbance in this equation delta p l you put delta p d upon s here delta p d upon s if you do so then it is becoming actually if you put delta p d upon s then uh, delta p d upon s you subput it here and multiply both side by s right so first you put delta p d upon s in this equation delta p l is equal to delta p d upon s you put it here and both side you multiply by s if you do so that is why here it is, is 1 if you multi both side multiply by s so if it is delta p d upon s this s will be cancelled it will be s plus s into something so that is why your it will be s and this s if you multiply both side that s s will be cancelled here you multiply this is actually this term will be delta p d upon s so multiply both side by s so this new denominator s will be cancelled it will be minus k p into delta p d upon 1 plus s t p and this side if you multiply by s it will be s plus this one s is here so s s will be cancelled it will be k p into this thing r into all this thing so whatever you are doing is same thing we are getting so not writing here i think you can do it yourself just a simple thing put delta p d upon s then multiply both side by s so you will get this expression right that means that means your s into delta f you simplify this one that s into delta f is equal to your whatever things coming right so is equal to minus k p then delta p d into r all these things i mean what will happen actually if you make it like this it will be it will, it will become s look at the new denominator it will be s r s r into all these thing s r into all these thing plus this is a plus sign there is a plus sign here plus k p into r k i plus s into this term right uh, and then this one you are what you call minus k p into delta p d into r 1 plus s t g 1 plus s t t 1 plus s t r into s that means both sides what we are doing is actually we are multiplying by s both side we are multi here it is s here also it is s so both side we are trying to multiply by s so that is why this side when you multiply that minus k p into delta p d is there along with that this side will multiply r into all these things divided by this thing then both side you please multiply by s that, that means the s del f so delta f s is limit s tends to 0 s delta f right and as s tends to 0 means it is 0 so steady state error of the frequency will be 0 so thank you very much i think you have understood this little bit to do it and multiply both sides so it is s s from control system you have studied all this so thank you will be coming here.